Between the two directs that we've just had, I think we've got about one direct's worth of good stuff to chat about. I'm going to take all of the interesting things, leave out all of the other stuff, and just give you my thoughts. The direct kicked off with a load of DLC for Bellatro, Witcher, Vampire Survivors, Dave the Diver, Among Us. All of that is now a free update that you can download, and we absolutely loved Bellatro in our review. Having a load of extra content for it, that can only be a good thing. So yeah, consider going and grabbing that if you've got the game. We saw the new game Never from the Gris creator and that looks very interesting indeed. I think the art style is absolutely beautiful. It remains to be seen what style of game it is, whether it's going to be a Metroidvania or following the same footsteps as Gris, but you can't deny that looks incredible. That one's out on October 15th. I couldn't really figure out Moth Cubit at all. Something about Moths trying to save a company in a bug filled adventure. Not really enough for me to go on there and some weird mini game action going on, but I am pleased to see some more Coffee Talk with Coffee Talk Tokyo. That's like the perfect combination really. And of course, course we then saw the Sea of Stars Throws of the Watchmaker DLC. I love Sea of Stars, it's nice to have some DLC for it and you're trying to stop what's called the Cursed Carnival. It's interesting I guess and a world I'm happy to go back to. Probably the highlight of the Indie Direct for me actually was a game called Morsel where you're a mouse battling cats with cards and it's a roguelite and I could see that it was published by Annapurna which instantly gets me a little bit excited but it uses that lovely scanline style it was from a small indie team who looked like they really had tried a few new things with their game and that lovely scanline art style really did look delightful something about this one just caught my attention yes we've got a million roguelite small indie teams but it looked to have that special source that you don't often see so i'll definitely be keeping my eye on morsels i'm not even going to talk about the day everything game we saw i mean it's everything that's wrong with the world <laughs> <laughs> it's just terrible. Peglin is one of the surprise indie drops of the day. It's like a roguelite inspired by the game Pachinko, is it? Is that what they said? I will have to see a review of this one, I think, before I go making a purchase. Pico Park 2 is also out today. I haven't played the first game. It looked all right, but I won't be rushing out to play it, honestly. They showed us a little bit more of Europa, which we've already got the free demo of. It was good to see more of Shovel Knight, Shovel of Hope, the second game, or sorry, the new game, I should say but that doesn't release until 2025 they did show the metal slug tactics is coming out soon that's a good game and a series we very much enjoy so that'll be out before the end of the year obviously plucky squires in september and right now you can download pizza tower which launched today it looks quite good so that was the indie portion of the direct or at least my highlights from it not a huge amount really to write home about still some nice stuff but very much end of life cycle style releases in my opinion bar the occasional little little rays of light. Now the Nintendo Direct itself, well, it was a strange one again because at the very start of the Direct they said these are games that are releasing in the last, I think it was half or like final quarter of 2024, but then most of the games release in 2025. So yeah, I don't know how that works. I'm sure there's a reason that I just aren't, I'm not picking up on. I know Glenn will absolutely love Tetris Forever, the collection, because of its big anniversary coming up. As far as games go, Tetris doesn't really get boring. It's just such a fun game. Not overly fussed though, personally. One of the standard standouts for me visually was Star Overdrive from Dear Villagers. Now this very much looked like Haven, do you remember that game? Even down to some of the assets that are used. You're moving around the worlds on a hoverboard, you can customise that, it has that sci-fi twist. Everything I enjoy really, it looks cool with real time action combat in there as well. But another that doesn't release until next year. Now Goat Simulator 3, I've already done a performance review of it, it's not the best on Switch. And I could see that from the trailer, I was like hang on this doesn't look great. And yeah, unfortunately it, it met my expectations it's just not a great release we got about three seconds of trails in the sky which does look fantastic but another like so many of these that doesn't launch until next year they filled quite a bit of space mentioning things like the star wars hunters season three and then they didn't use i, I don't think enough space for some big announcements at least to me the stalkers release coming i think it's november the stalkers games are incredible first person rpgs i guess and this pack looks to have all of the dlc sees as well they're amazing like absolutely brilliant releases some of my favorite games from back on pc so i think they should have given a bit more attention to some of those especially with them being out this year 
They're releasing Worms Armageddon in September as well, if you're interested. And we're getting a new SpongeBob game. Now, I did actually enjoy the last SpongeBob game. That's why I mention it in this video. This one's Patrick's, was it Patrick's Star Game? Something like that, the Patrick Star Game out in October. Yeah, for kids um, and big kids that like SpongeBob, the, the games have been okay. So that's potentially worth keeping an eye on. Then we had a load of filler. We had the fitness boxing, not going to talk about it. The Capcom fighting collection, yeah, that's that's fine, that's good. And the Marvel vs. Capcom. But then what Nintendo did was they just started to list every game in these packs as if they needed to really fill up this 20 minutes. But then off the back of that, you get the Atelier Yumia, which is a new Atelier game in the franchise. And a franchise that I love, but man, could you see from that trailer the performance issues? It just looked like it was struggling. So I guess it's early days. There's some optimization that can be done. We got the Sweet Code and 1 and 2 re-release with all the quality of life things you'd expect, two to four times speed up of gameplay. And then there's the Dragon Quest 3 2D HD re-release. But they alluded to a few new gameplay mechanics that sound quite core in terms of what they could change. But yeah, it has that 2D HD style. It does look very nice. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a great game to play again. Another release that we had same day was the Castlevania Dominus Collection. And Konami, yeah, fair play. It does look nice there's some artworks and things in there but there's also a reimagined version of one of the games so it goes a little bit further than some releases we've had we saw a bit of Sid Meier's Civilization 7 at Gamescom and that one launches in February of 2025 so we've got quite a wait yet but a series yeah we love we've got Tales of Graces F which is coming out on Switch in January not too much to go on I've not played this one I don't know anything really about this one at all but I do love the Tales games so yeah interesting and obviously the EA already leaked My Sims with one of their listing so we knew this one was going to be in the direct the my sim series which my kids will probably love that comes out in november as does the five nights at freddy's help wanted 2 release which is in december and i think they said something about a dlc for security breach i know glenn enjoys that one we got the obligatory just dance i'll move on a little showing of mickey the hobbit funko fusion FC25, Lego Horizon Adventures, Rune Factory, Guardians of Azuma, that has a spring 2025 release. This actually looks really nice. I did notice a few interesting things here. When I was watching some of the footage, most of it was in 30 FPS, but every now and then it would switch to 60. And I don't think Nintendo would show another build. Like, I don't think they would show a non-Switch version is what I'm saying. But there were these shifts in quality and also performance. Could it be that Marvelous have one of the elusive Nintendo Switch 2 build kits or dev kits from Gamescom? I absolutely guarantee you those... Those are out there in the hands of lots of developers. And did Nintendo just show us some of that footage? I don't know, but yeah, it was weird seeing it suddenly switch to 60. And that game does look very cool. The final announcement that we had was Yakuza Kiwami. Now the world has a funny way, doesn't it, of things just popping up interesting times. I had just worked my way through this as my first ever Yakuza game on Xbox while it was on Game Pass. And then it left Game Pass when I hadn't finished playing. And I don't know if you know Game Pass, does this annoying thing where if that happens, you basically have to buy the game. So I bought it, and yeah, it's really fun. They're completely bonkers. And there's this character that keeps popping up, and you have to beat him up all the time. But as for like storyline and stuff, I'm really glad to have finally got into the series and see it coming to Switch in October, I think it was. That's cool. So I'll make sure we get a review of that out when it comes. But for me, my highlights, I think there's three of them from these two combined directs. The Stalker releases, the Yakuza game, and that Morsels game from the Indie Direct. I can definitely see, and I'm sure you can, why they combine the two directs together there's enough filler in there that realistically you can get like 20 minutes of good content what were your highlights from the show i know i didn't mention some things they were just not my cup of tea and thanks to our patreons our members all of you that enjoy the content and as always for all things switch all the time keep your switch up cheers guys see ya apologies for that slightly lackluster see ya i've got a bit of a sore throat today